happy that you were kind enough to invite me and the Food and Drug Administration back. We're happy here. to have you. So happy to have you. Because you have some vital information. But first, let's just plow off first with the website so that if people need to go in and find something specific, whether that be sunscreen, um, bugs, what's now virus, I don't know, anything all that might be going things. on, all those right. good things we think of summer. <laughs> you know, we need to be prepared about what is that consumer base, because it is a very consumer friendly website. It is, uh, and some, you know, I've, I've heard some mixed reviews, but most of them have been pretty favorable. So if you, your, your viewers want to go on www.fda.gov, it's a .gov, not a .com, uh, you'll get on our website, and, and it, it is user friendly. You can search under anything from you know food protection to sunscreen updates, to terrorism and, and any acts and, and recalls that are that are going on. Indicate, just type under recalls slash drugs, recalls slash food, recalls medical devices, and it'll get pretty specific from there. Uh, sometimes the government writes a lot, so there's, there's a lot of reading to be done yeah. to get to the meat of the recall. We have a, a new bit of legislation called the Food Safety and Modernization Act that was signed into law by President Obama back in January of this year. Uh, changes the whole regulatory patent when it comes to food safety. We have some 48 million people every year in this country who suffer foodborne illnesses. That's one American in six will get sick from the food they eat. So we re Ramona, we really had to look at that and change it. Our, our old laws are 100 years old. I am Joe Consumer, how does that affect me? I mean, is there any major, major change in it that I would see as a consumer different right away? Well, that's a great, that's a really great question because you really wouldn't, you wouldn't. It impacts on industry, on the food production industry. It's called the Food Safety and Modernization Act. And what it's requiring uh, is that the producers of, of food products um, have in place uh, preventive uh, analysis plans. In other words, we want them to look at problems that they may face in their production lines, right to the main sauce, Ramona, of producing the foods, and put together plans to correct those problems before they happen. It mm -hmm. makes us much more proactive. In the past, food has sometimes gone from a production facility into wholesale and into retail, and we've bought it, and the problem goes home with you, and we correct it from that standpoint. Right. But now we're bringing it right down to the producers. Things evolve in life. People have asked me, well, why didn't you do this Earlier. Well, it, it takes time to evolve. Um, we've been around since 1906, that's a little over 100 years now, and we've seen laws change and get better with technology, with training, with science, with dedication and budgets. Um, so we have just seen our laws get more effective. Uh, so, so now we're taking the, 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 the response mechanism, the corrections, right to the producers, and that's probably where it should be. It really mm -hmm. should be. They should look at what they do, how they do it, and have plans, written plans, which are going to be required now, in place to correct these problems before they get out of the factory. Uh, Sunscreen is an interesting thing nowadays. It's been years and years since we addressed it back mm -hmm. in like 2006, 2007. The, the new laws or regulations for sunscreens have just come into effect. They're still, I hate to say this on, on, on camera, but they're still about a year away from going into place. You know, how much more time, right? Yeah. Um, by and large, sunscreen washes off unless you reapply it. There's new formulations now in, in what we call broad spectrum uh, um, policies when it comes to sunscreen. Um, if you have a broad spectrum product, it means that it has been tested, new testing laboratory of procedures uh, worked out by the Food and Drug Administration and related to industry, the sunscreen industry, um, which will guarantee that the SPF, sun protection factor, from 15 on up to 50 plus um, conforms to protection against UVB and UVA ultraviolet lighting, mm -hmm. rays from the sun basically. Right. The ones that age, the ones that cause excessive uh, skin burning and such. So if you are a broad spectrum product and you've been tested and follow the testing procedures and formulate your sun pr uh, protection material, sunscreens like that, you're, you're really good to go. So what does this consumer do? Walks up to it and looks for the words broad spectrum? How do they well, know they that do. it is they, broad spectrum? They do. They, uh, they look for broad spectrum. If you look at the, the, the old containers now, and I think they're still, this is still on the shelves, you have S PF, sun protection factors of 100. Yeah. Uh, they're getting carried away. I was like, what's up with that? <laughs> well, you know, Come it's, on. it's a marketing tool and yeah. it's not accurate. It's deceptive. We have found through, you know, scientific research and we are a scientifically based agency that once you reach an SPF of 50, there is really not enough scientific data, Ramona, to indicate if you're 60, 65, 70, 80, mm -hmm. 103, that it's any better. Than so they're not waterproof. Well, you so know. They say they're waterproof, but that just means, you know, if you have a little dribble of sweat going 
now. Right. That's 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 right yes. now waterproof. I mean, because as a consumer, when you think waterproof, forever, the whole kid goes by swimming, and they come <laughs> back, and you're like, okay, he's good. He, well, he's, yeah, that's right. I mean, but that's it, not true. No, in the old days, um, I mean, you'd have to reapply it, I and mean, that was always recommended, always part of the, the yeah. probably the ingredient statement, the use statement, and so forth, and, and what the regulatory guys would say as well, the FDA. Um, there will be new formulations coming out, which I do believe may very well make a, uh, a sunscreen product that stays on your skin longer. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's to reapply is always a good idea. Yes. Yeah. You know, you got like some 60 million Americans. Uh, over the age of 20 who are either obese or overweight. And yeah. it, it's, it's like one third of the population has a major weight problem. Yeah. I mean, you know, go to your big box stores, go to your fast food restaurants, people watch. Uh, yeah. A lot of heavy folks. And yeah. you know, that's something that we, we try, that's, it's a pet concern of mine to drive that home mm -hmm. and it's something I think you have to readdress and readdress and just get home to people. Right. Um, you know, Proper eating habits, not all uh, obesity is genetic. Very little of it really is. A lot of it is lifestyle, a lot of it is dietary, and we're, Ramona, we're all gonna be paying for uh, obese people in the future. I mean, the extended health care, the uh, obese-related uh, problems with you know the coronary system, mm -hmm. with uh, you know respiratory system, mm -hmm. with bones, uh, everything is just, um, it's, it's an epidemic. It's an epidemic, and we have a program out now called Spot the Block, which I think I might have brought some handouts here. Uh, maybe I didn't, but it's it's a case where we want to get young people mm -hmm. to look at, at labels and maybe understand what food labels say. Yeah, and what they're eating. Exactly. And what they're eating exactly. and what it means. At, at a real early age, it's good for children to understand yeah. uh, you know, what sodium is, you know what the carbohydrates mean, what the sugars will do to your system, yeah. um, what's good, what's not good, mm -hmm. and become little label readers. Label. You've been watching Ramona Interviews. Have a wonderful week.